today we're going to be talking to Claire and we're going to cover a whole bunch of stuff that really good conversation pieces and really good things to think about and consider as a student and young professional at at different levels of your career. So welcome, Claire. I'm really, really glad you could join us. If you can give us a, an intro into who you are and what you do and why I'm having this discussion with you, <laughs> and, then we, <laughs> and then we can get going. Yvonne, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, it's an absolute privilege and an honor. Um, I'm, I own uh, Communication Collab. I'm the founder and director and for the past five years, um, we've worked, I've worked with successful women and I've helped them climb the corporate ladder of business success through mindset and business coaching. Now, I know for a lot of women, it's easy to feel unappreciated in a male-dominant corporate world. And um, a lot of women have come up against this. And we find that maybe if they were having conversations like this, before they actually went into a specific mm -hmm. role or industry, it makes a world of difference. And the expectations that women have to exceed are not equal as we know. Mm. So as a success coach, um, I've got programs that empower successful female women to climb the ladder of success. And I work with a lot of entrepreneurs as well. So obviously I have my own views and I've done a bit of research. I've done quite a bit of research. And if every South African female, and I'm talking about the entire population, I'm talking about females only, that said that she was going to start a business actually did. Oh, right. This was, this was not towards the end of last year. This was like in October last year. Yeah, yeah. If she actually did, by the end of 2022, there'd be 976,000 jobs created. And by the end of wow. 20, 2022, um, there'd be 175 billion rand coming into the South African economy. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. That's amazing. But now what we find is, is that, and I'm by no means just saying it's only graduates or it's youth or it's anybody, but this is probably the climate where small businesses can thrive. Yep. Done correctly, start mm -hmm. out properly, mm -hmm. get your support structure in place. There's opportunities. There's opportunities. Absolutely. And now I hear people saying, oh, but there's no funding. Um, contact me. There's plenty of funding agencies. One of the companies mm -hmm. that I work, one of the government institutions I worked for was a funding institution. Right. Um, the funding is there. Yes, there's requirements um, like anything else. If you go to the bank and ask, yeah. they're going to ask for certain things. Yeah. yeah. So the funding is definitely there. If you've got an idea I would suggest that you actually go and try out and do some research, find out if it's a viable idea, if it's something mm. that you can do and start that business. Okay, so and why I'm don't not, people do that? And your, your, because this is obviously part of what you're working with is to try and help people move and transition to uh, higher levels, whether that's higher levels in their own organization, you know, in terms of like executive or whatever, or higher levels in terms of moving from employment to entrepreneurship. So if all these women have all these great ideas for businesses, then why aren't they starting businesses? Okay, so as a graduate, number one, they're probably not going to start a business off the bat because they had this idea, unless they were entrepreneurial from a very young age, that they are working to be employed. Yeah, right. They are working because they cannot be a CFO, for instance, um, or as an entrepreneur. Well, you can, you can call yourself the CFO, but also note that you are going to be the IT technician, the receptionist, the switchboard. <laughs> You're going to be doing everything as an entrepreneur, um, but they have aspirations, they have career aspirations. Mm -hmm. And until they actually reach those milestones, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying success, I'm saying milestones, they then think, okay, you know what? I've achieved this now, let me try. Mm -hmm. Your route. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of women with ideas that um, will not start something because they are too comfortable. They are comfortable earning the salary. They are comfortable with all of the benefits that they are getting. Um, South Africa is not um, a very good example as to like family life or, or anything mm -hmm. like that. No disrespect to anybody, but we've got a lot of um, female head 
household, yeah. right? Yeah, so they carry a big of, responsibility. They carry a big responsibility. And um, there's a lot of single moms out there. Mm. Now, it's tiring. Women have a lot to deal with. Okay, so mm. you've got your career, you've got your kids, you've got the household you're running. Mm. And unless you're only going to sleep two hours a day, you're not going to start a business on the side as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it's not doable. But um, it's tough. But it's, it, it's, it's a tough ask. Mm. And I think that if a lot of people actually had the encouragement and a lot of people also fear failure yeah now yeah they realize that the opposite of failure is success mm. and you're not really afraid of failing you're more afraid of success because when you reach success whatever that success may be it means that you are leaving certain people behind mm. and we've got this perception that it's lonely at the top We've got this perception that it's lonely as an entrepreneur. Mm. We've got this perception that um, when I succeed, um, I have left all of my counterparts and whatever else um, behind, and I can't, I can't keep those, I can't foster those relationships, mm. which is all a lot of limiting beliefs, and mm. we need to unpack those. But the opportunities for entrepreneurs, the opportunities for small businesses, the opportunities for funding. Um, more now than ever. I know that government is putting a lot of um, mm. emphasis on, on the small businesses and funding of small businesses and because they know that corporate South Africa can't go. Mm. There are only so many jobs to go around. Yep. So for the graduates that are, that are starting somewhere um, yeah. are looking to get into their first job, I'm not saying don't go and do it, but if you've got an entrepreneurial flair and you want to yeah. do something, yeah. And maybe do a bit of research, do a bit mm. of work and look at it as an option. Yeah. Yeah. What I wish someone had have said to me when I started working was opening the conversation of entrepreneurship. It never occurred to me that the qualification and the skills from the qualification that I was working on or working towards um, could be used for entrepreneurship. And I think that's what you know, and, and it took me a long time, like, you know, it's been quite a journey to like shift all of this, you know, these beliefs that I have and these understandings or whatever. But um, the most important part of the qualification is not the knowledge, it's the skills, it's the underlying skills that it gives you. Um, and that you'll use wherever you go, you know, as a CEO, as a CFO, entrepreneurship, you know, if you're a mother, <laughs> like whatever role you have in life, you take those skills with you. You take yourself, you know, you take yourself, you are tech, you know, technology in the world that we live in has made entrepreneurship so much easier than it's ever been in the past. You know, it's, it's been the easiest to launch an online business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, with, with COVID and with the pandemic, nobody, well, I don't want to meet any of my clients. Um, <laughs> greatest of respect to all of them um but i'm protecting them i'm protecting myself yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other thing is i don't just have clients in south africa so i've got global clients yeah which yeah it's it's opened that door now for, for global opportunities Absolutely. um but then there's something else now we all realize in in 2020 that one salary is not necessarily enough that you need to have a multiple yeah. multiple streams of income whatever that might be for you. And I'm not saying that you don't need to like burn yourself out with like three different businesses or you're working during the day and moonlighting doing three different things at night. But if you think that your salary is going to be enough. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's, 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 it's a tough one. It doesn't it matter how one. big of a salary it is. Um, yeah. There are a lot of people that right now. Yeah, um, yeah whether they are sitting at whichever level, they might be the only person working in their family. So because of that, it's, it's a bit of a tough one. So multiple streams of income is definitely um, something that needs to be looked into. In yeah. terms of entrepreneurship, there are um, so many different ways of, of getting a small business up and running, doing it right. well, and then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and and, and scale. Yeah. Scale to scale to be big yep. enough. Yeah. Um, 
there's there's lots of opportunities where if you maybe partner with someone else and and do a, a collaboration um you've got two different skill sets that's now come together as one yeah. and you can then have something whether it's a product or a service or whatever it is yeah. it's something that the market doesn't necessarily have and it's yeah. all about yeah. what problem are you solving yeah yeah and how well are you solving it right yeah and i think um you know i think you know stability the concept of stability has changed or our understanding of what is stability has changed so there's that discussion totally agree but i also think that you know one thing i say to 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 students that i talk to or young professionals i talk to is that even if you don't actually open a business i mean you know, having an entrepreneurial mindset is really valuable when you know, having an employee mindset to a large extent is quite passive, you know, where, to, you know, like I think our understanding or society's understanding of what employee or employment means is that we kind of wait for our company to train us, develop us, promote us, change our roles, give us, stimulate us, you know, mentally, um, build skills, look after our retirement. So to, they, and that historically has kind of been the case where the employer was responsible for all of this stuff. And so as long as you have good work ethic and you're doing your job properly, your company will look after you in all of these ways. Not out of laziness, but it's just, it's a, I think it's a societal mindset of like, if I'm working for another company, it's their responsibility to train me and they will decide what to train me on. They will decide what skills I need. And an entrepreneurial mindset is far more about if I want to add value and if I look to the future, what do I want out of the future and how am I going to get that? So even if you don't, you know, even if you never actually open a business, having an entrepreneurial mindset as an employee means that you take ownership like, I believe I need to increase my leadership skills. How am I going to do that? And things have definitely Perfect. changed. I, I, I totally agree with you. I started with that as well. And it's not necessarily to say that I didn't have that mindset, but we were almost taught to, like, stay in your lane, stay in yeah. your zone, um, yeah. where things have changed now. Yeah. And the world doesn't look the same anymore. Companies are wanting you to be... Um, Proactive. This yeah. this word proactive keeps yeah. on being thrown yeah. thrown around. Yeah. But when when they say that they want you to be proactive, they want you to literally take responsibility. Number yeah. one for your own career path. Yeah. Number two for your development. Like yeah. it's yeah. And, and it's only in your best interest. Absolutely. Because you you if you leave the company, you take your skills with you. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you might do some kind of, you know, management leadership course. And you may not use it in your current organization, but it may be very valuable for you, you know, at, at your next organization. Well, that might be the catalyst for you to leave or move or whatever. Something for, and I'm not just saying it for, for your students, but I've, I found the need to work on what it is that a, an entrepreneur needs to start off their business. And I, I'm working on my online content at the moment, and it's called Fempire Masterclass. Oh. And yeah, so what the Fempire Masterclass is, is literally it's online, um, but it includes a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the aim is literally to cover things like your vision statement, because I believe that your success is aligned to your vision. Um, what it takes to start your entrepreneurial journey, yeah. the mindset, the decision, the planning, um, making sure that you have a valid problem that you are trying to solve mm. and how are you solving it mm. and then conducting market research and then also a bit of business skills like doing a proper SWOT analysis, doing a proper uh, personal analysis. <laughs> I yeah. know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yes, it's, uh, it's been interesting doing it because from, from the people that I have been working with, these are the things that have been coming up more and more. And it's that they're looking for number one resources mm. and information. Mm. So resources in terms of like handouts or give or whatever you want to call it, but information as in like, 
how do I go about doing yeah. this? How do, I, how, do I do a vision, how do I do a vision statement? Yeah. Um, like, what does that look like? Where do I start? I'm working on. So, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I, it's, it's, yeah, it's a big gap in the market at the moment. I agree. So we'll put links. Um, we'll put links into that into that course in um, in in the video and 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 the article as well. Because um, yeah, again, it's it's really easy to say you have an idea, um, and as you say, like a lot of people have ideas. Oh, I could do this or I could do that or whatever. Um, but and now, <laughs> what next? Like, where do I go? How do I start? Well, they start their business is. A hobby and then they stay yeah. in the hobby mindset yeah and the business true. never grows because you're treating the business like a hobby yeah true yeah and then you're kind of like well it can't really be a full-time business but that's because you haven't really been working at it as a full-time business exactly. yeah yeah uh, i agree and i think this is like most of my audience are accounting students so i know there's still like a little bit of like why are you trying to encourage me to open a business and i think there's you don't need to be an accountant or an entrepreneur, you know, um, no matter what your profession is, there is value again in the entrepreneurial mindset as well. But I, like, I really encourage, regardless of where you are in your journey, whether you're doing like you know, first year, second year, third year, you started you're ending, whatever, start thinking about this, you know, start thinking about this stuff because you don't know where your life is going to take you. And like, there are so many opportunities out there. And by looking for them, you, you open up a whole world that you may not have known existed, you know? So like a lot of people are like, yeah, but Yvonne, I want to be a CFO. But like, do you know, there's, there's entrepreneurs that are part-time CFOs. You know, I yes. can be an entrepreneur and I'm, I, I, I sell my services as a CFO to like X amount of different companies. So instead of being an employee of one company and being their CFO, I can have my own business and be the CFO or give consulting advice as a CFO would to 10 different businesses. And that, may, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm a CFO, but I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, like we don't necessarily even think about that. I, I agree with you. I think we're sitting in a place where there are an immense amount of opportunities out there like far more than we realize and in a way i think for accounting you know for people who are accounting you know accountants the the opportunities are even higher because you have a very important skill set which is the ability to understand money um and and working with accounts and let's be honest businesses are about money at the end of the day so one you've got those skills um and two very few accountants are entrepreneurs so you you have an you have a really interesting competitive edge there where like very few accountants become entrepreneurs because it's just like something that we see as two totally different existences. So and then the third thing is there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't understand money. I'm, I'm blessed in that. Yeah, you are. Right, yeah. I studied business and, and, yeah. I, and I understand and I know, well, I'm not going to balance books or anything, but I can read my income statement. I know what's going on in the cash flow. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I understand those things, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't. Yeah. No, they are 100%. And if you understand, you know, if you understand what entrepreneurs are struggling with um, and you're able to, you know, to help them with that, that makes you incredibly valuable for, you know, for, for, for entrepreneurs. So there's an enormous amount of value. There's an enormous amount of stuff. There's an enormous amount of opportunities out there. And I think that the biggest skill to start with is like being aware to look for them. Oh my goodness, we could sit and chat for like the next 10 years. <laughs> we could, we could. Okay, so fantastic. So I'm gonna put in a bunch of links to who you are, what you do, and your, your courses and stuff so people can find you and a whole bunch of other stuff that we've spoken about. And um, yeah, depending on like I often get comments and emails and queries from students and people that are watching. So guys, if you have any other discussions or related conversations that you'd like us to have along these lines and that you'd like, you know, Claire out to discuss or whatever, please let me know, put in comments, email me, whatever the case is, and we will we'll schedule another chit chat. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And, and wishing all of the graduates much success. Oh, yes. Whatever it means to them. Yes. Agreed. Whatever that means. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Cheers.